First and foremost, do you condemn what Hamas did? Do you support what Hamas launched? Of course not. So do of you condemn not. that? You just condemned Israel for killing civilians and you won't condemn Hamas for killing civilians. I'm sorry for your own personal loss. I mean, can I just be clear, though, you cannot condone the killing of civilians in Israel, can you? Do you condemn that kind of action? That's Hassam Zumlut. He's the head of the Palestinian mission to the United Kingdom, and he's been asked repeatedly to condemn Hamas, including right after being asked about how six of his family members were killed in Gaza in an Israeli airstrike. But Zumlut has pushed back against the continued demands of condemnation. How many times you have interviewed Israeli officials, Louise? Hundreds of times, hundreds of times. How many times Israel have committed war crimes right live on your own cameras? Do you start by asking them to condemn themselves? And here, Zumlut is really underscoring a critical way in which the media narrative around this current wave of confrontation has been developed over the last few days. How Israelis are given the moral authority to commit violence against Palestinian civilians without ever having to be asked about it, and how Palestinians are held responsible for violence that's committed against them and their occupiers. The way to look at the situation in Palestine is to not ignore the history. One of the things that we do repeatedly is to just ignore the Palestinian But you condemn issue. what Hamas did. Uh, it's, it's very easy for me to condemn unlawful killing. It's very easy for me to condemn. But do you condemn, condemn. it? it do it's you very condemn easy. It? And so when Palestinians like Zumlut or other Arabs and Muslims are asked to condemn violence against Israeli civilians, and especially when it's the first thing that they're asked, they're basically being asked to qualify their humanity. They're basically being asked to say, yes, I don't want to kill you. And this is a specific tool of rhetoric that's been weaponized against specific populations, Arabs and Muslims, for decades now. There's an underlying assumption that if an Arab or Muslim does not condemn a particular type of violence, then they are in fact in favor of it. That's the default, that they are in fact themselves threats. But what's the utility in this demand? There is, of course, an inherent prejudice that does underlie anytime there is a demand for condemnation. Because like I said, if an Arab or Muslim is not distancing themselves from a particular instance of violence, then they're obviously the threats that they were made out to be the whole time. But beyond that, demands for condemnations are used to diminish and obfuscate legitimate concerns and critiques necessary in a given moment, like right now. By spending time on condemnations reserved only ever for one group of people, Israeli war crimes against a besieged population become, at best, a secondary concern and, at worst, a necessity. I think you're unfortunately going to see collateral damage that we haven't seen in combat and in conflict uh, that we've not seen this century, perhaps going back to what happened during the Second World War. And inherent in how condemnations are used in this context is the moral authority that's given to Israeli officials who currently are using the language of genocide against the Palestinians, as are many American officials. And I'll say this to, to Prime Minister Netanyahu, finish them. Finish them. Hamas did this. You know Iran's behind it. Finish them. Do whatever the hell you have to do to defend yourself. Level the place. We expect all international organizations to focus on these hostages and how they are treated, but it's not going to stop us, prevent us from doing what we need to do in order to secure the future of Israel. I don't think there's any way Israel can be expected to coexist or find some diplomatic off-ramp. Uh, with these savages. And I don't think we know the full extent of it yet. I mean, there's more to come in the days and weeks ahead. You can't coexist. They have to be eradicated. Time and time again, we find little at best deference to international law. Instead, we find full deference to the claims, threats, and solutions of Israeli and American officials. There is no pushback. And instead, we see a fog of war enclose on any and all coverage of what's happening right now a fog of war that strips an entire nation of its humanity.